Okay, so this is the continuation of our topic uh, in Chapter 6, Lesson 1, How Do Earth Moves? So this is just an extra information for our topic. So since we are discussing about the moon's revolution around the Earth, this is an extra information. Didn't you know, girls, that United States is not the first country uh, landed in the moon? The first country, okay, the first human man-made object, meaning a spacecraft landed in the moon, is from Russia, okay? So, in, during that time, man doesn't land in the moon, but there's spacecraft landed in the moon. So, that is uh, Luna 2, that is the name of their spacecraft. Okay, they launched their spacecraft or they landed in the moon. The spacecraft landed in the moon September 13, 1959. So since Russia and uh, United States is a big competitor when it comes to exploration of uh, heavenly bodies in the universe. So United States also planned the exploration to the moon. Ten years after Russia they launched their first manned spacecraft, meaning a spacecraft with human being. And then they successfully landed in the moon, dated March 20, 1969. That is 10 years after Russia. Okay, so again, the first man-made object touched down or landed in the moon is headed by Soviet Union, which is Russia. And then, after 10 years, America launched their first crewed mission, meaning with human spacecraft uh, launched by human. And then, they successfully landed in the moon. Who are those men? Apollo 11 is the name of their spacecraft, okay? So, their mission is Ju July 16 to 24. Neil Armstrong is pilot in profession. Same with Michael Collins and then Buzz Aldrin. They are not uh, astronaut before their NASA work. Their work before is pilot until until such time they joined NASA and then they were trained to be astronaut. The first man landed in the moon is Neil Armstrong and then the pilot of the spacecraft is Michael Collins and then Buzz Aldrin is the second man landed in the moon. Okay, they are all pilot in Air Force of America. Okay, here, how long it takes, okay, how long uh, they took the flight going to the moon. They launched the spacecraft July 16, early in the morning, 8.32. And then they reached the lunar landing, meaning the moon landing is in July 20, 3 o'clock p.m., 3.17 p.m., in the afternoon. Okay, so that take four days. Imagine, 16, 17, 18, uh, 17, 18, 19, 20. That is four days travel. Going to moon. Earth to moon is four days. When you use a spacecraft. Okay, but let's just try to calculate this one. Earth to moon distance is 384,400 kilometers. When you use a spacecraft, you, it takes you four days to travel. But didn't you know when you use a jet plane, which is not possible, but I am just showing you how far is moon from the earth, it will take you 18 days. 18.9 days for you to reach earth. So this is a calculation, okay? So I use this uh, formula to calculate how long. Are you going to travel if you use a jet plane? Okay. So that is just a piece of 
extra information for you. So let's go here. So seasons is just a result of the Earth's revolution across the sun. Earth always tilts the same way during the revolution around the sun. What is the meaning of tilts? Okay, so remember that the Earth is rotating on its axis. Axis is an imaginary line and then the Earth is tilted. Tilted meaning it is in a slope line. This is a straight line, right? Tilted is a slope way of line. Okay? So, Earth is still affect how much sunlight parts of the Earth receive. So, since the Earth is tilted in its axis, it receives not equal portion supply. Meaning, the whole part of the Earth is not receiving an equal portion of the sunlight okay so in the northern hemisphere hemisphere meaning half of the earth north meaning the northern part southern hemisphere is here so if you try to look at this one in this diagram look at how the sun rays strikes on the earth so this portion is directly hitting the earth during the southern hemisphere summer ah, southern hemispheres summer the sun rays strikes Earth more directly south of the equator. So this part is directly heated by the sun. The sun rays are concentrated, not spreading out. Concentrated energy gives this region warm summer weather. So when the sun is directly heating this part, the season in this region will be summer. In the northern hemisphere summer, summer, Earth's axis points toward the sun. Describe how you think the axis looks in the spring. In the spring, Earth's axis is neither pointing towards nor away from the sun. I will show you. So the question is about spring. How do the axis of the Earth looks like? Okay. So we have here winter. Spring, summer, and fall. It says here, the number of daylight hours also changes in season. If you observe, December 21 to March 21, it's still winter. Same equal date, that is 3 months. December to March is 3 months. And then going to spring, March to June 21 is a spring. And look at this one. The northern hemisphere, okay, the northern hemisphere is here. It is quite facing the sun. And then during the summer, it is directly facing the sun. But in the picture, it doesn't show because here, it's the, here uh, it shows you the back side and then the front side is facing the sun. So that is the summer. The one facing the sun is the northern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere will have a summer season. As you observe here, March 22 to 23, all of the dates is starting 21 and 22, 21 and 22, 21 and 22. But here in September, in summer, here in the northern hemisphere, it is more than one day so 22 to 23 because one on the first day of summer a hemisphere has more hours of daylight than any other time of the year so that is normal that is happening every year that the northern hemis hemisphere will receive more uh hour at daylight Okay, compared to the night time. That's why here, you the number here is increasing. I will repeat here, the number is equal 3 months. Okay, 3 months, 3 months. But here, this is 3 months in 1 day. Because the northern hemisphere is receiving 1 extra day or more hours of daylight. Okay, so that 
is the result of revolution, the seasons of the Earth. Let's back to this slide. Calculate Earth's distance from the sun in January is about 147 million kilometers. In July, its distance from the sun is about 152 100 kilometers. So, remember that the Earth is an elliptical orbit. So, the kilometers or the distance of the Earth in January is shorter. Here. Going here. If you, can, if you observe, this space is larger compared to this space. So, the Earth's distance from January is bigger compared to July. Look at July. So, July is in between this. So, Earth is far from the sun. And then the distance is 152. The question here is how much closer is the sun in January than July? So, it is asking the difference. So, we will subtract. 152,100 kilometers minus 147,000. So the difference of distance is uh, 5,100,000 kilometers. Okay? So imagine the distance. So this distance compared to this distance is 5,100,000. Okay? So let's go to the Next question, number nine, what is a rotation? What is a revolution? A rotation is one complete spin or turning of object around its axis. Axis is an imaginary line. A revolution is one complete orbit of an object around another object. A revolution causes one year or 365 days, or it also causes the four seasons of the Earth. And the rotation causes one day. It also causes the day and night or the 24 hours. Number 10, in what direction do the stars and the moon and the sun seems to move across the sky? It is, it is going to the east to west because Earth rotates in opposite direction, which is west to east. Okay, again, sun, moon, and then the stars are... It, it seems like it's moving, but actually it's not moving except the moon, eh? east to west. But the earth rota rotates from west going to east. Thank you girls for listening. For more questions, you could uh, send message. You could send message in WhatsApp in class. Eh? Thank you for listening. Till next time.